Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this live session on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is Axel Technology. I'm Marco Branzanti. I'm CTO here in Axel Tech. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, in this session we have a lot of people from Asia, Middle East, Africa and Europe. Thank you so much for joining us. I wish to remind you that during the session if you want to uh, make any questions you can use the uh, bell icon on the um, top uh, uh, right hand corner of the YouTube interface. So just click on the bell icon and you can start the chat. I have Gianluca Righi here in Bologna, for, uh, which is our uh, video director. And I have Stefano Grego, which is looking at your questions. So we can do some live Q&A. Um, he's in Rome right now and he'll prompt me with the questions. So today we're going to talk about two uh, products from Axel Technology. Uh, the first one is DLG Plus, uh, which is actually a character generator uh, software and system. And the second one will be the multi-cross converter. It's like a software glue to convert between video formats. So let's start with the first product, uh, which is the DLG Plus. Uh, DLG stands for Digital Logo Generator. It was born uh, to be connected as a, simply a let's say a channel branding system um, for your TV channels, so it was a digital logo generator, but then we added so many features into the software that it actually became much more, and that's hence the plus of the DLG Plus product. It's actually uh, evolved into a real character generator, so not only you can use it for your channel branding the end of your TV chain to put your logo, your tickers, your calls, your news tickers and so forth, but you can actually use it in live production um, as a live character generator. Let's see the product. So uh, this is the GUI of the system. Um, it's a Windows based system uh, and uh, I have a Windows 10 here. I'm going to show you I'm using a uh, Blackmagic video card in this case. Uh, it's a Decklink Duo 2. It's probably the best card you can use. Uh, it's a little under $500 or something like that. And it'll, it has four connectors. Actually, the, it's a very flexible card. Why? The connectors can be used both for inputs and outputs in play out and capture situation. But the card actually works in uh, downstream key so it can use the connector as a separate key and fill uh, outputs and this is very important if you want to connect the system to a video mixer you just connect the two cables as key and fill in downstream key and this allows allows you to have a very good quality on air with perfect transparency and that's kind of what you the effect that that you want not all Blackmagic cards have this feature, so uh, you should look at the specs of the, of the card just to be sure that uh, external key with downstream key and fill-in key is possible. Uh, of course, the Blackmagic, uh, the, our software can also work in internal key. Internal and external key are two concepts. Uh, internal key you connect a video source to the card, to the video input of the card, and on the output you'll get the same video you put on the input plus the graphics keyed in. So the downstream keying is actually performed by the card itself. Um, this is not very suggestible. Why? If you turn off the unit or you turn off the software, the Blackmagic card does not have a relay by bypass. So, uh, so th this means that you'll go black on air. So I always suggest to use the external key mode and eventually if you, you can use also for as a digital logo generator, uh, you can use like the Atom Television Studio HD, which is a thousand dollar video mixer. And you can use that just as a DSK inserter. This also gives you the, uh, the advantage of 
whatever video you put on the input, the video mixer will actually resynchronize it. So this means that your output will always be very, very stable. When Axel Technology does integration uh, for playout system, uh, this is how we use it. We use the DLG connected to a, an external key mode with an external DSK inserter. It's a very professional way of doing it. Okay. So uh, we support other cards, of course, Asia, DeltaCast, Streamlabs, uh, DeckTech, others. I would say that the best uh, ratio between quality and price is with uh, Blackmagic video cards. This card in particular is a card which can manage SD signal, HD signal, and HD is up to 3G, which means it can do interlaced, of course, which is perfect for TV broadcast, but it can also do 50p, 5994p, and 60p frame rates. If you need more, there are other cards available on the market which go up to 4K and 8K. When you set up the system, this is where you actually set up the resolution you want to use uh, the, the product. So as you see, we go up to 4K and 8K as well. Of course, for higher resolution, you really need a very powerful computer. Also because remember that graphics is a little heavier than normal play out. This is, the reason is, the graphics, uh, is the management of the pixel is in ARGB32. Why? Because we have 24 bits of pixel for the video and the other eight bits are used for the cool transparencies that you want to use uh, in graphics, like semi-transparent backgrounds and so forth. And this is very important. So yes, the DLG supports 32 bits, uh, which is including also the alpha channel. So let's go and see the product itself. Let's put something here just to show you some videos and some graphics on here. So the first peculiar thing about uh, uh, about um, the, the product is the GUI. Why? Usually when you approach for the first time a CG product, it's not that intuitive. Everybody has their own GUI and you need to study the product a little bit. So we wanted to create something that was intuitive, that, you know, a first approach, you know how to use it. So what did we do? We actually replicated the interface, the GUI of a video mixer. Actually, if I pull up my ATEM software uh, interface here, you'll see that I have a program bar, a preview bar, and this is actually the software for the video mixer, okay? And you have an auto take button with auto and cut, okay? So that's what we did over here. We wanted to recreate a program bar, which is the top row with the numbers, a preview bar, and we have our take, as you see it over here. So let's see what you can do about it. Well, if I select something in the preview bar, like these logos, as you see them over here, and I press the take button, it'll actually go on air. And you will actually see it on air. Right now, I'm actually uh, creating a background with my Uplay machine, which is an Axel Tex uh, production player. I have a, a, a Starks uh, trailer uh, looping. Um, and on top, the ATEM switcher is actually, uh, let me show it to you, is actually keying the video. And I have it over here. So I can fade it out and fade in. So I'm using the DSK of the video mixer to actually insert the graphics using that external key that we were talking about previously, okay? So as you see, it's very simple. So whatever you get on your preview, you see it here in your preview pane. And when you take the program and you take it to an and just clicking right now, and it actually goes on there. As you see, we have transition effects uh, when I go. It's never a cut effect. It's always something smooth. Of course, if you want, you can go into the settings of the template, of the CG template, and program a cut effect. But by default, we always or fade or move or do. I want to specify that 
uh, the DLG Plus is not a 3D CG system. So it's uh, actually a 2D system. Uh, of course, we can play out any types of animation. So if you want to, you know, render your 3D things in After Effects, like a lot of TV stations like to do that, then of course we can play that out, no issue. Uh, but all the effects, the movements, and the rendering, which is done in real time, is done in a 2D uh, engine. Why? Well, one of the major philosophy of the product is simplicity. So this is a really, really simple system that uh, the user can, uh, can uh, immediately uh, take advantage of. And so, you know, on the market we have very, very simple systems which are uh, kind of cheap, not, uh, not expensive, but the effect that they have on air, so the quality that you get of the CG on air is not that great, but they're easy to use. Then on the other hand, there are a lot of systems which are on the top end of the market, which are really, really good quality on air, but they are very complicated to use. You really need to study and you need like a specialist to use the system. So DLG kind of fits right in the middle, where we have really good quality on air with anti-aliasing, transparencies, and... Uh, and uh, and other features, uh, very professional. And on the same hand, the, the, simple, the, 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 the system is really simple. So you can use it right away. So let's see what you can do. Well, I have some demo templates inside. They're just templates made by our um, CG technician and uh, I, for typical use. So of course, you can use it as a logo generator. And you already see that we have some moving logos here, animated logos. We'll talk about file formats afterwards. And of course, what do we have here? Well, we have a moving logo with a clock on the bottom right. So we're kind of in the, let's say, channel branding uh, a, a re, uh, a situation here. But then it has much more. And as you see, this is a template which could be used by um, music TV. So as you see, we have two crawls on the bottom. We'll talk about the different type of objects that you can have. Crawls are is text, which just runs uh, right to left or left to right. Yeah, we support, this is Unicode, so we support any language. Also double byte, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, but also, let's say, Arabic. So that's why I was talking to you about right, right to left and left to right. Yes, fully supported. Uh, as you see, there's an animation running on the top right, uh, top right hand. And then we have tickers. What are tickers? Tickers are something like the crawls, but actually information comes on the screen with an effect stays on the screen for a few seconds and then moves out and this is done in a loop so crawls and tickers are uh, can, uh, kind of very similar but do have a different effect so we have uh, news uh, let's say a ticker in the middle we have uh, on the right hand we have a ticker which is showing the weather and we have some uh, uh, the, the, let's say uh, the, 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 the classification of, you know, the hit, hit parade running on the top right. Okay, let's go on. Well, sports, of course. So as you see, this is a kind of a cool sports template. We have news running on the, on the bottom and some uh, scores, which are running in the middle and on the top right-hand corner. Notice that in the ticker on the top right where you have your flags, the flags actually are animations. You see a glare on the flags which is running. And this is something which is typical of high-end system. So the possibility to include animations also in, row, in rows, tickers, and crawls. Let's go on. So I have my news here. This is a typical of a news channel, three nice crawls on the bottom. You have news, you have a traffic situation, and a weather situation on the bottom. Stocks, and this is kind of interesting. We'll go back to this stocks template. Why? Well, of course, the nice thing about these uh, items on the screen is that they're connected to what we call data sources. 
in this case, the data source is actually an Excel file. It's an XLSX, which is the latest format. It's an XML format by, by Microsoft. And so what the nice thing is you can type in your information in your spreadsheet and automatically whatever you type in, it will go on air. And the nice thing about the spreadsheet is that we can take advantage of all the formulas which are in the spreadsheet. So when you're looking at the top cr uh, crawl and you see the red arrows and the, and, um, the green arrows, which tells you if the stock went up or down, that can be automatically calculated directly in the format. If it's negative, show me this uh, bitmap. If it's positive, show me the other bitmap. And that's how the, 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 the template is, is done. Then we have a news template, which kind of cool. Uh, so we have uh, the tickers on the right, finance, showbiz, sport, a top uh, crawl, and on the bottom I have a crawl with the news. And as you see, there's a little world twir twirling around with uh, alpha channel and transparency as well. That's the GIF. And as I told you, the fact that you can put uh, animations directly in your crawl is actually a feature that you wouldn't find in high-end products. Okay, let's go with another one. So I have shopping television, something you can interface this to your uh, Excel file, to your spreadsheets. So maybe uh, you have a automation system in your shopping TV which can actually tell you how many items are left, how the bidding is going, and so forth. If there is an automation process which actually updates the spreadsheet file, all the data will automatically pop up and go on air uh, from that uh, spreadsheet file. Last one, News Now. Uh, and this is a typical template, which is very, uh, very similar to um, American uh, um, uh, network, okay, <laughs> and as you see, animations, glares, effects, nice uh, uh, fades, and so forth. Okay, let's start with some Q and A just to break up uh, the moment, and then I'll tell you something about the right hand section. Uh, Stefano Parchetti, hi Stefano from the European Space Agency. How are you, Stefano? Ni nice to have you here uh, listening to us. How do I get a rendered file with alpha channel, like the example Marco made about After Effects animation, on the preview button? Just uploading the file on the hosting system, right? Well, let's say that uh, we haven't seen it yet. Inside of the DLG product, you have built in a template editor. So the template editor actually allows you to make all uh, real-time modifications to your template. So let's try and do something like that. So what I will do is I will just choose a free page, and then I will insert what we call media object. This object actually in, some time ago was separated into bitmaps, into animations, video files, etc. Now it's called media. Why is that? You can put any media that you want. So uh, you can put uh, a static bitmap, a, a sequence of bitmaps, so it's going to be an animation. And if the bitmaps have uh, alpha channel transparency, you're going to get that nice effect on air. Or you can put any video. It can be MPEG-1, MPEG-2, MPEG-4. Of course, if you don't have alpha channel, that'll be a rectangle on air. So it's like a picture in picture. But if your video does have alpha channel, then you'll get that alpha channel on air. So for example, this is an animation. I'm not sure if it has some transparency. I have a VGA preview. So when I click on the VGA preview, actually what I'm going to get is a small window, okay, and show me that animation and I can close it. If I want to take it on air right away, I just press the take button and actually it's on air and you get that animation on air. So in this case, I don't have an alpha channel inside. Uh, let's see what type of file this is and I will tell you why. So we can, we can it's a SWF. So now we can kind of talk about the file formats that you're going to use. So uh, of course, 
any file format, if it's media, it's going to stay there. Actually, also, if it's audio, <laughs> you, you can use it. Then we'll talk about how to get that audio out of the system. Uh, usually what we are looking for is a format for our animations with Alpha Channel. And luckily, industry has focused very, very much on distribution codecs. So the MPEG, starting from MPEG-2 with digital transmission, then we went to MPEG-4, H.264, H.265, AV-1, and everybody's kind of concentrated on that. But all these formats do not have alpha channel. So we are kind of stuck with old formats that were developed many years ago. And until a new format comes out, we're going to use that. So which are these formats? Well, the best one, in my opinion, is still what is called a quick time animation. A quick time animation has a MOV extension. Inside, it's called Anim Plus, and the plus stands for the alpha channel. So it's uh, quick time, the, the, I would say that uh, beat rate is kind of okay, gives you great quality, millions of colors, all the levels of transparency built inside, and that's kind of the best option in my opinion. There are other formats that you can use. Uh, for, of course, sequence of bitmaps. Uh, once, uh, the typical bitmap that was used were Targa files, TGA files. Uh, uh, right now, I, I think that the best option is sequence of PNG. So it can do, you put all your files in a single folder, you select the first one, and the system will automatically treat it as an animation. And um, uh, let's say that um, uh, another file format is GIF. GIF has a limited number of colors and only one bit for transparency, so you're not going to use it for big animation, but GIF in crawls and tickers is very good. And if you go on the internet and you need a GIF with a specific icon or whatever, you just type in the keywords into Google and you'll find a lot of GIFs because they're very much used in web pages. So you, that's kind of handy if you need something particular. And one of the formats, of course, that we've seen over here is SWF. SWF is actually one of my favorite, uh, but uh, luckily it's kind of going in end of life. SWF is what is called an Adobe Flash format. It is interesting because it supports millions of colors. It does have transparency, but it has some add-ons. It's vectorial. So if you use internal shapes and you rescale it, you don't lose quality. Also, fonts are vectorial, so you can scale it and you can use it. And it has inside a mechanism called dynamic text. So you can actually put some text inside, and from the DLG, you can change that text dynamically. We'll see this in a while. Uh, uh, unluckily, Adobe Flash is many years that it's been declaring that it's going to abandon <laughs> the format. It still didn't, so it still works, uh, but we are expect that sooner or later they will abandon that format. One of the last formats that I want to talk to you about as far as animation is concerned is quite modern. It's called ProRes 4444. So the last four actually stands for the alpha channel built inside. Uh, it's a very good format, but it is demanding on the system, both in terms of bit rate, so you need to use uh, fast disks, and in terms of CPU usage, so you need a quite a powerful CPU. But I have people using it, and it is a very nice format. Okay. So let me go on uh, with, uh, to show you a little bit of the GUI, and then we'll go with, um, with, uh, with uh, some uh, uh, other Q&A. So as you see, the left part of the screen is what we call the single page selection. What does this mean? That when I press a button, I get a push-pull effect. So I'm going to press Live News now. Everything goes away and then my live news page will go on air. So it's what we call mutually exclusive, which means one page at a time. Of course, in every page, it's multiple layer. No limits on the layers and on the items you can put in a single page. So a lot of people ask me, but how many layers can I use? 
Of course, the limit is your system resources, which means CPU, essentially. That's why when we made the system many years ago and we were using, let's say, uh, uh, dual, uh, dual uh, 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 processors or four core processors, uh, we could achieve only limited possibilities. And so we take advantage of the fact that now you can buy an i9 processor, uh, which is not so expensive, and you'll get to use the full power of your i9 in order to add more objects, more complexity, and more layers on the screen. I would say that in a HD situation, you'll never use your i7 processor as much. So an i7 processor is more than enough to do HD. So, uh, out of this, you have uh, 10 pages on the screen. Of course, the B page is your blank page, just to remove any object. And you have tabs on the top, which allows you to select up to 99 pages. So, you can put all the pages that you need 24-7, all on the 99 pages, or you can load and save the template in order to have additional groups by 100 pages. 100 pages is more than enough than you will need for any type of a show, quiz show, sports show, or etc. I want to show you one important thing that uh, is a very, very cool option. If between two pages I have common objects the system will do a smart comparison. This is really, really cool. And the common objects will actually stay on the screen without fading in and fading out. We call the fade in and fade out the ping pong effect. So many systems will do this when you pass from one template to the other, they will ping pong. Here I have on page eight, I have the central two icons where you see DLG Plus and CG Live, and I have the same two icons on page seven. So when I click on page seven, as you see, the two uh, items, the two bitmaps will actually stay on the screen and I won't get that ping pong effect. So smart comparison is very nice and this also tells you immediately how you can use the system. So you can make a page with a logo on the left, a crawl on the bottom, and, how, and then another page with just a crawl and another page with just the logo. So this changing between these pages will allow you to get that combination that you need and avoid the ping pong effect. Very good. Let's do the last part of the initial GUI. So we see it on the right. I have a section which we call the multi-page section. And for similarity with the uh, video mixer GUI, remember that I was telling you we're trying to replicate, it's more like the DSK insertion section on the, on the video mixer. What does the video mixer do? Well, actually, when you use the left part, you're switching between cameras. And of course, it's mutually exclusive. When you use the DSK, you're actually adding other video on top in a, let's say, in multiple ways. So if you have a lot of DSK, you can put a lot of videos on top of your video. So that's what we wanted to create with the right part. So if on the last, uh, left part, I'm going to put a simple graphics now, uh, I have one single page made of multiple objects, the letters from A to Z are actually multiple individual layers. So actually we have 26 more layers on top, and actually then you have capital letters and small caps letters, so actually it's 26 plus 26. Let's say more than 50. How do I use it? Well, if I press on the A button, the, on the A button, on the top right-hand corner, I'm adding another layer of graphics. If I press the B button on the bottom left corner, I'm adding weather, so it's another. And as you see, these buttons are completely independent. So this means that you can use them and in a very interactive way to add your layers on top. So 
What, what is it actually? Well, logically speaking, we have mutually exclusive on the left, and those are the number, mutually not exclusive on the right, and those are the letters. And like that, you can really make any combination possible. Now I want to show you the great advantage of having the preview and program. Why? That's where you get the most of it. So I'm going to clear all graphics. I'm going to select something on the left and something on the right here. And I'm going to take it on air. So I have two objects now. And on the preview, as you see, I can select a different template. Maybe let's go with this one and add something more like the match and the weather. And what's going to happen on the preview, you can see exactly what's going to happen and go on air before going on air. And of course, common objects will stay there. And when I press the take button, what you're going to get is exactly the same effect on air. And there you have it. Okay. So, there you have it. There it is. Okay, sorry, I didn't press it right. Okay, so you're going to get, in this multiple situation, the preview and program architecture that we get is going to give you a lot of advantage. By the way, if you're using this card, which is the DeckLink uh, Duo 2, you get four connectors, and those can be two independent uh, key and fill outputs. Now, if you have a DLG Plus, it will use, by default, one channel for the program, and the preview output will also be available as, as a key and fill. So if you want to connect it to a professional monitor to get the you know, real colors, to actually see the quality, to get also the interlacing, you, know, you can actually set up that output as a professional video output. But DLG Plus is also a multiple channel uh, CG. Uh, there's actually no limit. I think that uh, base model goes one channel, two channel, four channels, but we have done eight channel systems. So you can use it in which type of scenario? Of course, if you're talking about um, uh, channel branding, you can use the different channels to do channel branding on different TV program outputs, of course. But in a product TV production, live production, environment, multiple channels allow you to separate layers onto the video mixer and, for example, use one layer for the CG that can be recorded onto a file for later reruns, so it's, let's say, a one-level clean feed, and the other channel, you can use it to put all your CG which you don't want to record. So, in many high-end production environments, you do have multiple channels of CG which are feeding into the mixer. Actually, my ATEM, which I have over here, already has two channels of DSK, and you could use a DLG Plus two-channel system with a DeckLink Duo, and you will get Program 1 and Program 2 directly to your video mixer. So, we're talking already like you know, pretty cool production, high-end production. Uh, the 8 m 8K Constellation has four channels of DSK. So it can actually be, you know, you can go on with this concept. Okay. Uh, when I am using uh, the, uh, the DLG system with two program outputs, you can switch into the multi-channel view. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, I have something going on with my with my connection here, okay, no, no, just a sec, uh, I need to fix it up a little minute, just a second please, uh, let me fix it up, oh, yeah, it turned to life, I'm connected in TeamViewer, and I have a lot of stuff here, this is, we're live, so, sorry about that, okay, this is the nice thing about the live. Okay, let's start over. I wanted to tell you that when you are in a multiple channel situation, this is what I was about to say, uh, we have a special view which can show you all the channels with all the buttons on the same GUI. I am waiting for the system to come up live. It's coming. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, here I have it. 
and I was telling you I have a specific GUI which is this multi-channel GUI which allows you to see all the channel at once and another interesting thing when you're in multi-channel mode you actually have the possibility to hook up and link the channels between each other and so when you actually use one channel and change the pages and uh, the, um, the on the main channel it will trigger the same page on the other channel I have this uh, typical configuration in a TV station which has uh, multiple languages uh, so the the CG will actually change uh, according to the language so what they do is they use the main channel as their uh, let's say control GUI and automatically when they switch from one template to the other also all the other channel of the other languages will use their own GUI I have uh, another question what about 4k graphics well the, remember that this graphics is something which is kind of heavy on the CPU uh, because it's using a a ARGB 32 so 4k graphics is possible uh, in a 4k graphics situation I suggest to use a 9.9 processor uh, with uh, i9 and 9900K which is a CPU not that expensive I suggest to put in a GTX card uh, from NVIDIA which kind of helps the acceleration process and uh, we also have an interesting option in the setup which will use GPU acceleration. It will use that NVIDIA card in order to speed up the processes for 4K. So yes, 4K possibility is there. It's built in. So I'm going to say no. Okay. So uh, let me see. One more thing, uh, let's, I would pass directly to the other features of the DLG Plus and then I'll go with something, uh, show you something about the GUI. Let's see the timing. Yes, another five or ten minutes about this. So, uh, there are some interesting features built in into the DLG Plus. Uh, one is the scheduler. The scheduler allows you to actually uh, create a schedule, a schedule based on date and time. Also can be repetitive, so I can tell the system every n minutes or every n hours or every n days repeat that and you can create a programming of your cg in order to uh, go on air exactly at that time so the scheduling kind of a nice options built in i also have a playlist section playlist sections allows you to create a playlist of pages where you tell exactly how much time the system will stay on that page uh, a cool option as well one thing I want to tell you about the logs. Of course, I have technical logs which are built into the system, but I also have as run logs. What are as run logs? As run logs are used typically in play out automation and in order to create reports of exactly what went on there. These are used not only for technical purposes, but most of all for, let's say, administrative purposes uh, you want to be sure you want to that things go on air or when they went on air or you want to certify advertisement or all that so as well logs if it's very typical for play out it's not that typical on a CG system so in the setup you enable your Ezra logs and what it will do it will actually activate an SQL server built inside and the interesting thing is we taken that uh, that concept further in order to kind of create a sort of certification so what is written in the Ezra logs it's very detailed it's very big and it will actually tell you date and time of the a, any image that will go on air so you'll get the full path of the image any data that will get, went on air so any text but also data which was uh, read uh, it was coming in from a data source like an excel file or anything like that so the most uh, possible available information will actually go into that as one log and you can use that as one log according to any use you might have for it but that's kind of a cool option 
Uh, there's also EAS, this is kind of an interesting option, I often forget to talk about it. Emergency alarm system. In many countries they have systems which uh, advise the public about uh, incoming uh, atmospheric events like uh, tsunamis or tornadoes or other sorts of events. The system is, uh, you can connect it up to a specific hardware device, which are EAS device, and you'll get uh, messages coming in and we'll display those messages directly on the screen according to the EAS standard. This is kind of very popular or obligatory, actually, mandatory in the United States, but there are other countries around the world that do use EAS, uh, EAS systems. Something more, shortcuts. We haven't talked about the shortcuts. We have a very complete uh, section just to manage your shortcuts. What are shortcuts? Well, they're a way of pressing your keys and using the keyboard to actually, uh, instead of the mouse, to take those CG objects on air. And here we have a wide variety of possibility. You can use a simple shortcut like Control 5, I did one right now, directly from your keyboard. But you can actually hook up specific hardware device like the uh, Novation. Novation is kind of a cool keyboard which is kind of unexpensive. It's nice because it has buttons which are backlit and you can assign to each button a specific page or a specific action. So it can be a one button and go on air or you can define a preview program and use a specific button as a take program, take the blank page and so forth and you can customize your keyboard and use it for on air purposes. This is kind of nice. Of course, we also support GPI, so if you have specific, out, you want to hook it up to an automation system which provides you with GPIs, we support the Moxa. Moxa is a producer in Taiwan which makes a kind of uh, nice boxes for interfacing from serial device to also GPI and the Moxa works on, on LAN, so it's kind of handy. Or also an uh, interesting feature is the JL Cooper uh, GPI box, with JL Cooper is a manufacturer manufacturer of broadcast consoles um, in California and uh, also we can use a simple RS-232 port to provide the two GPI ins which is kind of a easy fast way to get some GPIs connected to your system. Very good. Let's see, 1042. We have to pass to the next prod product. Just want to uh, close it up a little bit and tell you a little bit about the pages section. So as I told you, the page section is a built-in uh, template editor where you can create and compose your, uh, so your, uh, your, your CG and very simple GUI. On the right we have our objects. You just select the object you want to put in. I want to put a crawl. Uh, add the crawl, there's your crawl, you can type in your text uh, directly and if you want to see it, you can see your crawl which is coming up in a, in a while. There you have it, that's your crawl which is coming in or you can get the data from a specific file and that's the best way of doing it. So if you get from a file, you can use a txt file, csv file or a spreadsheet file. I'm just going to show you very fast, no, sorry, I'm going to get this guy over here, which is live news. I'm going to show you, for example, in this template, which was kind of cool, you've, you've seen it before, the bottom uh, crawl actually is getting its, its, uh, its data source from a file, and it's an Excel file. So if I click here, let's see what happens. Wow, it opens, and it's going to open using LibreOffice, which is a cool and open source free uh, a compatible office product and as you see I'm using a spreadsheet to actually go on there and my images are actually embedded in the per spreadsheet just specifying the name of the file that I want to put in the crawl. The interesting thing about spreadsheet is of course we support the formulas I already told this but we we support rich text format which means that we're going to uh, we're going to respect the font you use into the spreadsheet, the back color and the fore color, and actually also the alignment. So the nice thing is you can set up your spreadsheet and use that 
extra rich text formatting, and we're going to actually uh, preserve that and show that on there. Very well. I needed to show you this because it's kind of uh, important. Okay. So, remember, DLG, very cool product, available in only software if you need it we can uh, and you can buy your own hardware you can buy your own black magic card and just install the software on your system uh, or we can sell you what what we call a turnkey unit uh, we usually supply the single channel version in a one rack unit very sexy very very key uh, slim uh, and um and inside the one rec unit, you'll get your Blackmagic card, your Windows 10, your software pre-installed, and it comes out uh, already configured and tested by our factory. Of course, specific special uh, configurations are always possible. Just uh, send in a, a request to our sales office, and we'll be happy to reply. Okay, I think we finished the first part of our a session uh, regarding the DLG Plus. Uh, Stefano from Rome is telling me, hey, let's pass to the multi-cross converter. Of course, Stefano, right away. So I'll close this and I'll pass to what we call the MXC, the multi-cross converter. Okay, this is a very non-typical product. It's something we kind of invented ourselves. There's no real category of this product on the market. It's not a playout, it's not a capture, it's not a CG. What is it? It's actually a glue. I'll make an example. In your uh, technical room, you have SDI signals, analog signals, you know, audio, video, and sometimes it is necessary more and more today to do some conversion on that. So you want to go analog to digital, digital to analog, SDI to HDMI. In order to do that, we are using, uh, you usually use small boxes, mini converters. But Magic makes a lot of those. Micro converters, mini converters, Teranix mini, uh, embedders, the embedders, and there's a wide range of boxes. What is that? That is usually called glue. In the sense, it's those devices that you need to actually glue together your video formats, your video signals, your audio signals, etc. Well, multi-cross converter, converter wants to be a software glue. What does this mean? Well, there are many types of signals which are not that easy to treat and to, let's say, uh, manage with hardware boxes. And these signals are typically, typically in the uh, PC, computer IP domain. So the, these signals are much easier to manage directly with the software. And since we have the technology to use IP encoding, IP decoding, NDI, which is a video over IP format, uh, by new tech becoming very, very popular. Of course, SDI signals, why not? Also, WebRTC, and we're going to talk about WebRTC in a while. SRT, why not? We are working on SRT, and also SRT is going to be, it's our new format, relatively new, open source by High Vision, which allows you to get high quality video at low delay for broadcasting H.265 over IP, and we'll talk about that uh, better. Well, all these signals are let's say, part of the PC world, of the, of the computer world, so they're much easier to convert and to treat using a software. And that's what the multi-cross converter wants to be. Have a look at the GUI. The GUI is actually, I'm going to go full screen, something like a multi-viewer. So now I'm going to pass in a 3x3 three three multi-viewer mode. And as you see, you can configure your system to actually use the number of channels that you like. Each channel represents a conversion, a box, a glue box, okay, which can have one input and multiple outputs. So what can you do? Let's have a look at the selection. On the left part, I have my uh, input source selection. So, of course, I have bars. This is just an internal bar generator that you can use. I have an AV device. I'm going to go here and show you. 
here I'm actually getting my video from a decklink duo and the third connector. It's actually not the third connector, it's the third channel, but this is just to give an idea. So I have some SDI signal coming in from my decklink duo. And of course, whatever source you see, you choose, you get to see it on the multi viewer, okay? Then, once you selected what you want to have as a source, you can apply some conversion on top. What type of conversion? Well, of course, you can convert upscale, downscale, crop it, aspect ratio correction, uh, also some color space conversion, audio conversion as well. So if you need to exchange sampling frequency or not do some down mixing for the number of channel, you can do that. Of course, audio level correction, and you have that as well. Notice the cool view meters, the blue uh, representation uh, gets you and shows you the original audio level. The green will be the modified audio level, so kind of nice, and you kind of know at a glance if you're, what, if you're manipulating the audio levels as well. And then, of course, you have your outputs on the right. So in this case, what am I doing? I got a nice file with water polo. Uh, I use this file a lot. This is an XD cam, 50 megabit, uh, water polo sequence. Why am I using this? Water polo has those reflections in the swimming pool which are really, really heavy on any codec. So it's my favorite test file in order to really uh, measure the performance of video codec compression, okay, because it's really heavy on that. So I'm getting that file from a source file. I'm outputting to an SDI output, and I see it here on my audio video output on my Decklink Duo. Then what I'm doing is, let me get this, I got a, okay, uh, I, it was going in real time before, I'm not sure why, let me go out and go back in, okay, just a second. Uh, so out and back in, here I am. So I'm outputting SDI just to have a video source and I'm going back into the card just to show you, here I am, that I can actually uh, use that video input from this audio video device. And what I'm doing as an output, I'm actually outputting this format, this, this video in WebRTC. What is WebRTC? WebRTC is a, a low delay uh, a protocol that is used in internet, uh, which is, it's actually a technology made by Google. I believe it's the same technology they use in their voice, IP voice conferencing, uh, meet, uh, hangout meet, uh, right? And um, so we are using that transport to actually embed high quality video and high quality audio inside, not for video conferencing, but actually for video distribution. And so what this means is I am actually broadcasting via internet in WebRTC that SDI which I'm getting. And on the third window, I'm showing that I would receive that WebRTC. And of course, this is done on a single system. Uh, you would do this maybe in another system on the other side of the world. And you would output that to an SDI output. And it will, the delay between the two video signals would be very, very low. This is something which is becoming kind of popular that we are doing a lot today in these hard times, let me say it, because video connecting and video link is, be, is becoming more and more uh, relevant. I want to show you a direct application of this. And let me pull up... Uh, uh, um, a team viewer, I'm going to connect to one of our customers' uh, uh, machines, and as you see, 
what I have here is actually a multi-channel configuration. I have one system in Paris and another system in Moldavia. This is a, a nice radio station uh, which also has a visual radio. And they have uh, four cameras in Moldavia and they're using the WebRTC technology to get those video, video signals in Paris where they have the video mixer. And so they're mixing local cameras with remote cameras, and this is possible for the high quality and low delay. And with the video, we are embedding the audio coming from the radio studio in Moldavia to keep that video and audio in sync, and then connect it to the audio mixer in a N minus, uh, N minus one uh, telco uh, interface, like uh, a telephone hybrids. And actually, they can have a, uh, a, a conversation between the two studios, like if it were by the phone, but actually we're transporting four HD high quality interlaced uh, video signals through the internet. And the interesting thing is WebRTC, no ports opened. Uh, they just, you know, we use a signaling server, so you don't even have to configure your routers in most of the cases to do this. Then what we do is we get the multi-viewer output of the mixer and the program output of the, of the mixer, and we send it back to Moldavia, from Paris to Moldavia, in order for them to have it on the screens and actually have an idea, uh, the guests which are in the Moldavian studio, to have an idea what is going on here. So what we are accomplishing here is a multiple channel, high definition, HD, interlaced, high quality uh, system to do bidirectional connection at very, very low latency. And when I'm talking very, very low, I'm talking a couple of hundreds of milliseconds, which in, uh, in for video is a real good accomplishment, okay? And the uh, interesting thing is the codec is adaptive, so if by any chance your line goes down a little bit, it'll automatically adjust the bandwidth, you lose a little quality, but you'll still get your video passing through, okay? And I have another application, uh, which is kind of interesting, is simply for remote connections. Uh, of course, you can use Skype, and we're going. To, we're seeing a lot of that, you know, uh, Skype meeting, hangout to do your connection. But if you need a high quality connection, what you can do is you can go out with your HD camera, 4K camera. You put up your lights. You feed it to a portable uh, connection system, which we can we can supply to you. We also do a very cool uh, turnkey, uh, let's say, mobile units. And what we will do is we will encode that high quality, send it to the studio. If you need feedback, we get the video return. We show you uh, in your, with a HDMI output, you just plug in your TV and you see what's coming out of the video mixer. And we can embed also some tally signals inside there. If you need some intercom, we can uh, feed you intercom through the connection. So there are a variety of application and Let's say that this kind of is an alternative solution to the typical, uh, uh, the typical, uh, let's say, uh, multi-SIM solution, the backpack solutions that you've seen in the past. Now you get the 4G connection, we're going towards 5G, uh, bandwidth is uh, available. So there are the typical, uh, let's say, applications for uh, this system. We just have four minutes. Can I you can you use it in a contribution encoder by means of a common ADSL or 4G connection? The answer is yes. Uh, you can use a 4G connection. We've already done a lot of experiments on that. Let's say that even if you have a two megabit upload, two megabit is enough to get you a pretty good quality signal out there. Oh, I haven't talked about the codecs. WebRTC supports VP8, which is a Google codec similar to an H.264, uh, H.264, of course, and you can use also GPU acceleration for that. When you have put up a multiple channel system, 
the encoding can be ca kind of heavy on the CPU. So what we do is we put a NVIDIA P Quadro card, which allows you multiple sessions, sessions of GPU H.264 encoding. But if you want really good quality, you also have the possibility of using a VP9. VP9 is the Google codec alternative to H.265 which are, are today, as far as standards are concerned, is the most efficient codec that we can use. So that's kind of cool. I want to tell you something more. Coming up very soon, a matter of days, we are also including in the soft, in this system SRT encoding. SRT decoding is already built in, so if you have an SRT uh, source, you can com get, uh, receive it and send it out to your SDI and hook it up to your routing switcher. Uh, but in a very short while, we're going to have SRT encoding. What is the advantage? Well, SRT, I would say, has more or less the same delay performance that you have in WebRTC. SRT is more like a transport stream over IP, UDP technology. So you broadcast on a specific port. SR, but you cannot use UDP on internet. Why? UDP technology uh, is a blind technology. It doesn't really make a connection. It just shoots out information, and it doesn't care if the information reaches its destination. So when you use this technology in internet, the packets, you will have packet loss. And this means that once in a while, you will see these blocks, you will lose connection and so forth. And that is why that technology cannot be used. SRT is kind of an evolution of UDP technology, but it has error correction. This, this means that when you're sending out these packets and some packets do not arrive, the system will actually resend those packages in order to autocorrect. So, you, so the interesting thing is you can use this technology, which is low delay, and, do not, and not have any issues on these networks uh, where uh, packets are lost, like over the internet. The other advantage of SRT is that you can uh, use H.265 native codec which is everybody is really looking at this that technology and it's kind of you know the last trend it allows you to save bandwidth or better get better quality video over compared to h264 okay so srt will allow you this will allow you low low latency and it's kind of becoming a trendy format i see there are hardware devices which are coming out more and more which support the SRT. I've seen cameras, I think Panasonic is coming out with a new line of cameras and embedded in the cameras they have SRT output. So it's something that we're seeing on the market and that's why we kind of want to stay up to date as well and we're going to include that SRT directly in the product. Last notes were on schedule. Uh, what other outputs that I have? Well, of course, I have a IP output. Let me not uh, cancel. Let me go like this and show you. I have IP output. So IP output can be an RTMP, very much used to go to YouTube, to go to uh, Facebook, uh, to uh, stream the video up to your website. UDP streaming, this is used as, uh, to, in your LAN environment, not over the internet, to maybe send your video to your multiplexer, uh, you know, in a, let's say, head-end environment for DVB or uh, other types of digital television. I have here a DVB compatible streaming which is, um, let's say, an interpretation of the UDP which kind of respects better the standards of the DVB uh, format. SRT, as I tell you, is currently under development, will be available probably next week. RTP, RTP Pro, RTSP, IIS, Apple HTTP Live Streaming, which is HLS. Uh, RTMP using Flash Media Live and Carter Windows Media Streaming. So there's a lot of protocols. For each of these protocols, you have the possibility of choosing your codec. So I have some H.264, some Intel. If you have an NVIDIA board, I want to remember, or an AMD. This is something new. 
Also with specific AMD video cards, you get a GPU accelerated encoding. Both NVIDIA and AMD, kind of interesting. This is a new feature, okay? Then what else? NDI output, so you can use the system to convert between NDI and any other IP format or video format and vice versa. Very cool. And of course, a a AV will be an audio video device, so it can be a Blackmagic card with SDI or other type of cards. And the last thing that I want to tell you is this A, the audio. This is something that people uh, that kind of underestimate. If I have an NDI and I want to convert it to SDI, no issue. SDI going to my routing switcher, etc. But if I'm in, live, I'm in live production and I want to use the audio in the NDI, I have to add a box, an audio the embedder from the SDI. So the in interesting thing, if you have an audio over IP compatible console, which is using Dante, which is using AS67, Ravenna, Livewire, whatever you want, you can install the software driver on top of the computer and then what you do is you convert the video but you simultaneously send the audio over audio over AP you have it directly on your console and you are saving a lot of money on your uh, SDI embedding and the embedding Stefano is telling me that we're out of time uh, five minutes late well, thank you so much for your patience, for assisting to this live session on Axel Tech's YouTube channel. I thank you very much to Gianluca Righi, which is our video director and actually is organizing all the technical setup. Thank you to Stefano Grego, which is coordinating from Rome. Thank you all for your patience, for uh, tuning in. If you need any information, please write to us at info at axeltechnology.com. I'm Marco Branzanti here in Axel Tech, and see you next time. Thank you so much.